Welcome back. Last time I showed you how to make trees respawn. This time I'm going to show you how to randomize their respawn locations. In Tree Spawner, I'm going to save off the points that I successfully spawn, and then I'm going to load those points. And I will remove those points from this data so that we're then only spawning meshes based on the points that were previously successful. And then when we remove trees from this, the, we'll stop feeding those points into this difference here, opening up space for this data to feed in and spawn new points. And then if we just update the seed every time, this data will generate different points and we'll get new random trees. So let's add a comment here, feeder data, and let's add these other nodes. Before getting into them, we're going to need some data. So let's duplicate this ism point data and call it main point data. It'll be type pcg point data. And now let's make some pcg blueprints. New blueprint, pcg blueprint elements, and this will be bpcg underscore set main points. Open that up, override the execute function, and first off, I'll get the points that we're inputting into it from the static mesh spawner. Get typed inputs, that's going to be bcg point data. And then I'm going to get index zero. And I'm only going to pass a single uh, point set into this function so I can stick with getting index zero. Next we need to get the points data from tree spawner. So let's grab this setup through to the casting to BP tree spawner from get ism points. And I'll add a sequence node here. And now we need a function to accept this input of PCG points data and set it on BP tree spawner. So let's add a function here, set main points, and it'll take an input PCG point data. I'll just call it point data. And now you might be inclined to just set main point data like this, but if you do this, what's going to happen is we will take our constructed point data. Well, actually we haven't constructed it. Let's do that now. In construction script, construct PCG point data. Another sequence node and hook that up and we'll set main point data. Okay, now we've got this constructed. So um, doing this will override the main point data we just constructed with this point data that is just temporary. And so down the line it might make saving a little harder. So I prefer to do it a different way. I'm going to set points on this main point data and get points on this point data. And then I'm just going to set the points to be equal here. Compile and save that. And now under set main points, let's call set main points and hook this up. And we have this return node with output and we have an input that we're not actually changing. So I'm just going to hook this input straight up to the output. That way, if we want to, we can chain another graph off of this one. We can also inspect easily. And let's drop this on in here. And you can see that the in and out are type any. Let's update that. Class defaults. No, no default in and out pin. Add custom ones. Input and output. Allowed types will be points. And because I'm only going to accept one input, let's just uncheck multiple data. And there we go, we've got set main points. Let's hook this up. Now we need our get main points function. I will duplicate get ism points because it's nearly there what we want and rename it get main points. 
open that up. May as well modify the class default while I'm here. Uncheck allow multiple data. And go to the execute. And we need to replace this get ISM points with a different function for main points. Back in tree spawner, I'll just duplicate get ISM points function and replace it with get main points. And because we're already setting the main points, we don't need this, which is setting the ISM points. We can just hook this up, change ISM point data on the return to main point data, compile, save, and back in the get main points PCG, I'll just add the get main points function and hook that up. Compile, save, and let's drop this on in. All right, so we are setting the main points and we're getting the main points. Let's play and save all and just make sure it all works. Got our trees. We have points, 197 of them. But we see a warning here, output generated for pin output, that's this output pin right here, does not have valid point metadata. So we have 197 points. If we look at set main points, we have 197 points, but we have this string right here with the mesh. And we're not getting that string in get main points. The string is also named string, which tells me that it doesn't actually have a name, it's just displaying the variable type in the header. So let's fix that. Out attribute name on the static mesh spawner. Mesh. Now we've got it named mesh. Let's uh, make sure that the skip main points can import this data right here. So I'm going to stop playing here. And on set main points, our main points data is never inheriting the metadata from the inbound point data. The way to do that is initialize this from data. The target will be main point data and the source will be the inbound data. And because we have inherent metadata and inherent attributes checked, this should allow the meshes to come through. Perfect. Let's stop this running. So now the meshes are coming through in the metadata. Now let's hook this up. So instead of removing the ISM points from this data, I'm going to remove the main points from the feeder data, and then I'll send the main points through the static mesh spawner. And let's just drag this on down here. And I will also difference these newly removed points from the main points, set it to binary, hook that up there. And because this only accepts one input, I'm going to need a merge on it. Because currently we're feeding two different sources into it. And let's see if this works. Save play. Remove a few trees, and a few seconds later, we should see them respawn. Ooh, that's weird. We took out a few extra trees. Let's try that again. Oh, but they did respawn. All right, let's remove this tree. Mm, happened again. We removed a few extra trees. So I can show you what's happening here. points we were working with previously looked like that. Very tiny, around the trees. But now we're saving the points from this static mesh spawner, which has apply mesh bounds to points checked. So if we check out this merge, that's what the new points look like. Really big. And in fact, I'd say they're a little too big because they're taking in the uh, size of the leaves into account, so we can shrink them a little bit, but I do like the fact that we are getting the mesh bounds now. So to shrink them, let's do a bounds 
modifier and just scale them down by 0.8, let's say. Don't need to worry about the z-axis, just the x and y. And now the difference node won't work as well, because now that the points are larger, using the static mesh's bounds, and they can still spawn 25 apart, theoretically, the bounds of multiple points can overlap a single position, and that's why removing a single tree resulted in multiple trees disappearing. So I'm going to implement a way to more accurately compare the points. Instead of a difference, I am going to use a distance node to check if the position of the incoming ISM point matches the position of the main point. To do that, I'll set the node to one maximum distance and center on the source and target shape, and I'll also have it set the density. And to make this a little easier to debug, I am going to do something else. Instead of just refreshing this in third-person character, I will add a get actor of class. Class will be tree spawner. And I'm going to call respawn trees. So every time I jump, <laughs> I'll trigger the tree respawn. It's not very efficient to get the actor every time, but this is just for debug purposes. Now on the tree spawner itself, let me just crank up the respawn time to, I don't know, 20 minutes. And if I play, remove a few trees, jump, jump, jump. All right, great. And the trees are coming back immediately because we've just added this distance node but haven't hooked it up to anything. So now let's uh, debug. jump, see the ISM points. This might reset when we check the distance, so let's redo it, jump again, and see what the densities are. They aren't being set. Let's crank up the distance a little bit, move a few more trees, jump, and see what the distances are now. Okay, density 0 0.8, 0 0.89, distances 400. 482, 431. So I can demonstrate what's happening here. I've prepared a helpful guide. Under bounds, PCG bounds, let's reset the scale on this thing. There we go. So we've got one of these trees, and this yellow orange box down here is the transform, and that's what our ISM points has. But this pink-purple box is in the center of the bounds, and that is the center that distance is checking on. So to get this to work, we're going to need to move the center of the bounds down to the transform. And there's a simple way to do that, bounds modifier. And instead of scale, I'm going to change it to set and just set it to, uh, let's just do negative 100 so it's easy to see what's going on. Set will center it on the transform point, the position. And you can see here now that this bounds box is directly centered on the transform. So if we do the same thing in tree spawner, bounds modifier on the main points, which have the mesh bounds on them right now. And I'll just set them to negative 1, negative 1, negative, negative 1. Hook that up there. Let's play again. Select our instance and try this out. All right, we got some distance zeros. We still have the maximum distance at 500. Let's change it down to one and try this again. Jump. And there we go, distance zero. Perfect. 
So now the only thing I need to do is filter out the distance zeros, which show they are overlapping with the ISM points. Point filter. Let's not forget to set the filter parameters. Constant threshold. Anything that's greater than 0.5 will continue through. Anything that's less will be discarded. And there we go. Things seem to be respawning. The points might still be a little big. Let's modify the bounds down even further. 0.6.6. Z can stay. All right, so things are respawning exactly as we want. Let's add some randomness to this respawn. So the only thing I need to do to add randomness, none of this path right here is random. So I can just update the entire seed, and that's going to add the random spawns. In Tree Spawner, under Respawn Trees, instead of this flush cache console command, I'm going to grab the PCG component, get the seed, and just call plus plus on it, which basically says add one and resave this integer. Compile and save. And so now every time I refresh, I will update the seed and then generate the PCG. And because I'm updating the seed, I don't need to call flush cache because it's going to detect that this data is different and regenerate it all. All right, let's try this out. Okay, so it's generating new things, but um, it's regenerating the static mesh every time. So uh, let's fix that. Oh, and I also see there's a warning. Output does not have valid point metadata. So this is going to happen when the count of points exceeds the initial amount of points that we set the metadata on. And we can fix that by under set main points. The main point data is never resetting the metadata on the existing points. So the best way I've found to fix this is to add a construction script constructing PCG point data and setting the main point data to this value. So basically, every time we're going to reset the main point data and then initialize it from the inbound point data. All right, let's try this again. And we still have the refreshing problem. But under Tree Spawner, we now have this mesh value. So instead of feeding these meshes that we've already saved into the mesh selector weighted, which is impacted by the seed. Let's move that back up there and add a new static mesh spawner that is mesh selector by attribute. And the attribute we will use is mesh. Hook that up here. Save, and let's try this again. There we go. We did see one weird reset, so let's try it from scratch. Looking good. Remove some trees. And there we go. We are randomly respawning trees and not touching the existing ones. So there you go, random tree respawning. Next time I'll show you how to add rolling respawn waves. So multiple respawn waves instead of just um, having a single set where everything respawns.